Hi guys, on this show we're looking at Bell, Mardoon, Busey, Ironside, Brown, Richards, Harris and Van Dien. We're looking at 1997's Starship Trippers. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of 100 Things We Learned From Film. I'm one of your hosts, I'm Planty and I'm a roughneck. <laughs> Hi and I'm John and what's your malfunction? That's, <laughs> that's, that's maybe an insult for the film by the way which I never really understood. No what's, I never what's really your know, malfunction? Is That's yeah. like what's your boggle for bloody uh, air? <laughs> what is your boggle, John? What's your boggle? <laughs> Do you, you, you apes want to live forever. Stop using the same lines of the dead I man from earlier on in the movie. Uh, yeah, we are the podcast that uh, tries to find a hundred things uh, from a different film every week. John, what are we talking about this week? We're looking at Starship Troopers. What a film. It's a great film, but it's not just me and you, big man. Nope. Uh, we've got a guest. We want to welcome the fantastically talented Big Shamu to the show. Uh, Shamu, how are you doing, mate? I'm good. Thanks for having us. No, it's been, we, uh, been waiting de- ages for Desperate that. to get you on. Desperate to get you on. Yeah, and this is um, his recommendation as well, so well, well chosen. Well chosen. <laughs> yeah, you, you chose this, and I've, uh, I've, I've been listening to your stuff on Spotify pretty much non-stop since John uh, uh, introduced me. So, In fact, I think you might have made my Spotify... Top uh, top five or whatever last year. Yeah, so, oh, there we uh, Tom Jones. It was, so... That's no bad. But anyway, <laughs> so that's you, now, quite you narrowly beat Tom Jones to number one spot. <laughs> he beat me. Shabu beat me. <laughs> I'm not even trying anymore. Uh, Shamu, do you want to tell us uh, what, what what your crack is then? Yeah, uh, I'm a hip hop MC in Scotland, and um, but I do a lot of production work as well. And as you know, I'll be doing a bit of music for you guys for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And this is a bit of an exclusive, isn't it, John? That, uh, yep. Uh, it was either, it was either, it was either Big Shamu or MC Rankin. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We are. We're going to have some new music coming very, very soon, uh, which we're uh, which we're, we're going to play for everybody. And if you're on the socials, we'll maybe give you a little bit of a teaser at some point in the next couple of weeks. Everybody, you know what it is we do. Uh, we are the uh, three blokes that are going to put together everything we've learned as we talk through the film and see if we can come up with that uh, magic uh, 100 figure. Boys, are you ready to hear? <sighs> ready. Fantastic. Lovely. John, I've cut you off there with talking about 97 because there's no point, is there? No. Because <laughs> last week we talked about 97. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely tied in. So yeah, if you want to find out what falls on ninety seven, just listen to last week's show. <laughs> yeah, and last week we'll prompt you to go back to another episode where because <laughs> you didn't tell you last week either. Hell yeah! Uh, it's like to Durkin, isn't it? It's like a, an episode in an episode in an episode. Within an episode, yep. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what it is. And yet yeah, the top stopped fucking spinning months ago. <laughs> anyway. Starship Troopers opens with this fantastic bit of uh, uh, recruitment. Everything's recruitment propaganda, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. From the was it the the network, wasn't it? It was the oh god, that's annoying. Oh, oh, it's it's network. Network. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and they are basically trying to convince everybody to uh to, to turn up it's basically like old school pathé news isn't it you know like that stuff you see news at the match uh, that yeah. kind of thing uh, and it's this i'm doing my part all these people i'm doing my part i'm a human shield i'm doing my part and then there's this little kid really doing, doing, doing his part <laughs> and they're all like oh, 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 murder the child uh yeah um it, basically it's it, it is just sheer propaganda yeah but it allows us. It's re- it's a really good actual thing with the film that it allows them to throw in lots of story without having to have all the characters talk about. Oh my goodness! I uh, thank goodness that we missed that bug asteroid. You know, and all yeah. this kind of thing. So it's yeah. it's really good kind of kind of good segue into a different elements yeah, of it. I absolutely, liked, I liked it. and and I did think that the narrator was um, Clarence from Robocop, but it turns out it's not. Oh right, okay. So I thought it was uh, Clarence, is it Bodinger? 
Clarence Bodiger. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's not. Clarence Bodiger wasn't doing his part. <laughs> he certainly wasn't. He was uh, kicking about in his six, uh, is it 2000 SUX. <laughs> <laughs> that whole doing my part thing just reminds me of that whole uh, I'm rolling up my sleeve for the vaccine. That's what it kept on reminding me <laughs> of the whole time. Like, I'm rolling up my sleeve for you rolling up yours. I was like, just can't escape it. <laughs> I'm rolling up my sleeve in a close in some fucking like, grotty <laughs> bed sit somewhere. <laughs> I'm rolling up my sleeve in number 10. <laughs> <laughs> this bug meteor's coming to Earth, and uh, these these bugs basically send in meteors. So we're all going to kill the bugs. Um, there's this live video of this guy, and he's going, it's a hostile planet. It's a bug planet. <laughs> it's really good. It's like live from, the, live from the front line kind of thing. Exactly, this, yeah. This bug basically... <laughs> Bites him in half, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> rips yeah. him apart. Right in the, the field, he's just. Yeah. I, I just couldn't understand why they had the member of the press just right in the middle of all the action with the cameraman running a bit like crazy. It made me think of the bit in uh, where Joker is sent to the front line in Full Metal Jacket. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 They made. It was kind. I think it was kind of around that. That's what they did at the time. Uh, Starship Troopers is a Buena Vista. Picture. I hadn't thought of Buena Vista for ages. It's been a while. It's uh, been a while. International distribution arm of non Walt Disney products and was discontinued in 2009. It's Spanish for good view. There you go. They learned something yeah, the first fact. Absolutely. And another fact just before you go uh, Asteroid Defense System, there's no known planetary defense system hardware developed for d- defense against asteroids on this planet. As we oh, know. right. Okay. So if we're going to get hit, we're going to get hit. It's going to happen. The dinosaurs had one. It didn't work. So, you know, we're not bothering. <laughs> There's these inverted commas kids in school. Fucking hell, right? <laughs> I know. We start with Casper Van Dien, who must have been 40 when he made this, if he was a day. <laughs> uh, it's it's one year earlier. Casper Van Dien's this character, Rico. Uh, I, every time they said Rico, all I could think was recall, recall. It was really bugging me. Oh. That's, I, I would argue, a better Verhoeven film. Yeah. A big, yeah. big, big, big fan of anything with Arnie and wins for me. Not that I didn't like this. I loved every minute of both times I watched this this week. He's drawing on this primitive iPad. It looks like you'd break your arm if you tried to lift it up with just one hand. Yeah, yeah. It's a CRT. CRT. <laughs> Don't drop it on Dan Aykroyd's head, will you? <laughs> Popcorn. <laughs> uh, they're learning about being citizens. And there's these other characters. There's Dizzy. Uh, there's Carmen. And a citizen accepts responsibility for the body politic, is what they're talking about. So this teacher... Is basically this guy who's trying to explain to them that if you want to become a citizen, uh, if you want if you want to a citizen improves the town or, or, or the country, whereas just just anybody else who is not a citizen just does nothing. And I think it kind of goes back to Greece, doesn't it? And I I, I I lent a little bit on citizen here when I was thinking about my uh, uh, a, a lot of playing Assassin's Creed. Uh, right, <laughs> took me back to uh, Assassin's Creed uh, with, when uh, you know when it, it basically referred to everybody as citizen. But the body politic is a city, a realm, or a state considered metaphorically as a physical body. Historically, the sovereign was typically portrayed as the body's head. What you would have is you'd have a town full of people. And it's all about, I don't know, one group of people would be the right arm. One group of people doing something else would be the, would be the left arm and, and, and so on. And, and only if people pull together does the body do what it needs to do. All right, OK. King, yeah, the king sits there, does fuck all, but, you know. <laughs> he, he has a head, though. He has a Absolutely. head. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Getting head, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about a failed state, and he? He's gone into detail about how the, the democracy has failed them. Yes. And they're pretty much in a, a field state. So just try to look up a couple like Vietnam and stuff like that. But it's just a weird situation for them to, to be in, talking about how d- d- you, you, you need to be a citizen. You need a yeah. citizen or a civilian, isn't it? And what's the difference? Yeah. Well, I, I think a citizen has more rights 
as we're about to learn as as, as the film well, goes and, on. And a citizen, a citizen can uh, is only you, know, you can only be a citizen of the United States to to join any federal sort of arm of the army or or, or even government. All right, uh, okay, fantastic. There's some exceptions. I just didn't yeah. look them up. <laughs> I, well, I, I did look up citizenship. So you can get citizenship to the US by serving if you're not a US national. So if you serve honourably in the US Armed Forces uh, for at least one year at any time, you may be eligible to apply for naturalisation. There you go. There you go. It is kind of a real thing. Casper Van Dien, at the time of filming this, he was married to Carrie Mitchum, Robert Mitchum's granddaughter. What? You wouldn't fuck about with Robert Mitchum, no, would you? No, you would not, man. <laughs> he was an old man. He would fuck you up. <laughs> uh, he did love he, cats, though, as we've seen he, in, 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 <laughs> in Scrooged. <laughs> yeah, uh, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, he was King Tal in Beastmaster 3, oh, which man. I've not seen. No. No. Uh, you going in? Mark Singer's in it. So's Tony Todd, apparently. What? So I'm surprised you haven't seen it. Uh He's also in Sharktopus versus Whale Wolf. No, I don't know either. And Starship Troopers 3, no. Citizens on Patrol. I don't think it's actually Citizens on Patrol, <laughs> but it would be brilliant if it was, <laughs> wouldn't it? And <laughs> you brought Bobcat Goldthwait in. That would be amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really need to think these things out before I say them. If you join the armed forces, you're a citizen. That that you work through two years and become a citizen. Carmen scores ninety seven percent on maths. She wants to be a pilot. Did you see Rico's score, by the way? Yeah, thirty five. <laughs> what a loser! <laughs> what an absolute. Well, I, 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 was, I was looking. I was looking up I mean, scores for the RAF. Right. So I was looking at that because she obviously said to get into the sort of um, the fly corps or whatever it is, you need to be good at math. But I looked it up, and it turns out um, you can apply. To, for the RAF to having a math degree at all. Once you're in there, you need to take an exam for English and maths, but you don't need a, an A-label maths to get in. Right. Let's let's join up, boys, because I, I do certainly it. don't have an A-level in maths, I'll tell you that. You, you'd be surprised, like, university is a 40% pass mark, like, as you're doing all of your coursework, so he's only 5% behind. <laughs> nice. Nope. So, so he could make that up in summer school, no bother. No problem. <laughs> but also, mummy and daddy are rich, so he doesn't have to fucking bother. They'll just just, <laughs> just name a, a wing after them or something. I thought he had a scholarship with his bloody death ball or... Death <laughs> ball, <laughs> what, speed, speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe? <laughs> speedball 2 <laughs> Legend. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, the, the other character is Neil Patrick Harris's character. He's called Carl, right? Yeah. Basically, Doogie Hauser says he's to forget Carmen because Diz wants him. Now, lads, I, I'm going to level with you. I think I'd pick Diz... Probably ninety nine times out of a hundred here. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. She looked like the dirty one, right? Yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> you see it like it is, brother. It like I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. I think she uh, aged better as well. To be fair. I yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, when I was when I was looking at the film, I, I, I looked hurt them both up to see what they're doing now, just to see the background. But yeah, she looks a lot, lot better. D- lot Dina better. Mayer, isn't it? It's Dina Mayer. I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she, she was in a couple of those Saw films. In fact, mm-hmm. I think she's actually in all of the Saw films for at least like a second, you know, like flashbacks and things. Oh, really? Yeah, she's definitely in a couple of them. Oh, they're in this dissection class. This is, br- I absolutely love this scene, this dissection class. Uh, did, did you spot who the teacher was, by the way? The professor? Yeah, uh, for Golden Girls. Yeah, it's Rue McClellan. Yeah. Yeah, I had absolutely no idea. Rachel pointed that out to me. Uh, and, and on the second watch, I was like, ah, so it is. She's not flirting with men like, young enough to be her grandson, so I didn't recognise. Uh, she it was obviously Blanche Dubois, as you've said. Um, she won an Emmy for Outstanding League Actress in a comedy programme in 87 for that and was married six times. Jesus. She really was a... Good. Well, That's a good game. <laughs> so they're taking apart this bug, and he's really good at it, Rico, isn't he? He's like, yeah, that's the stomach and that's the thing, and he's throwing them at Carmen, and she yeah. basically voms everywhere. Yeah, she must have been standing there with food in her mouth for ages because that seemed like <laughs> a bit 20 seconds, didn't it? She's standing yeah. there ready to go, ready to blow chunks. Yeah. <laughs> Doogie Howser's doing like this 
card experiment from Ghostbusters. You know the bit that uh, the, where they're doing the kind of the psychic bit in Ghostbusters. Yeah, at the beginning for the college, and he's psychic. Uh, he can convince animals, um, and he's got a weasel that he manages to convince uh, to to tell mum that, uh, that to go and bother his up, up his mum's leg because <laughs> there's a bug crawling up a leg. <laughs> All I could think with the, the Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters scene was, I'm going to go, and you can keep your five books. <laughs> like he's electrocuting them all the way through. I've got that in my notes. Is it Venkman's oh. experiment or something? Yeah. I've got? <laughs> yeah, I was certain it was that. So there is evidence to support that there is um, telepathy between animals, but no known link between a telepathy, te- tele- telepathy between humans and animals because animals use like gestures and body language. So. And plus, who would understand a dog even if it was talking to you? That's Not me. Fair. No. <laughs> the game is Tigers versus Giants, isn't it? These two teams. Mm-hmm. Any idea, boys? Just a quick quiz question for you. If uh, you were watching two teams, the Tigers versus the Giants in uh, a British sport, what sport it would be? Is it basketball? No. Mm. Uh, is it basketball? <laughs> No, rugby league. Rugby oh. league. You'd be watching Castleford versus Uddersfield. Uddersfield. Uh, Castleford Jaggers versus Uddersfield Giants. Yes. <laughs> These two players have a tussle. It's Rico and this 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 other guy. We find out later on. He, he called Lazarus. What was he called? Yeah. His stupid name, hasn't he? Um, I, I've written his name down later on somewhere. Uh, the, um, Xander. Uh, Xander. That's, that's it, that. yeah. That he the giants score and he's like leaning on the kind of the side of the thing chatting up Carmen, isn't it? And she's yeah. like, "Oh yeah, yeah, you come into the dance and oh yeah, my boyfriend's playing for the other team." Like, I hate you, <laughs> I yeah, absolutely yeah. hate you. While while, while Rico gets slapped in the side of the head, that was unintentional. Oh, was that unintentional? Yeah, well, she, well, she was shouting. Well, she was shouting at him, <clears throat> and um, she just slapped him. But he wasn't expecting it and she crapped himself. So it was that look of shock in his face was real. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And she says, We'll do the flip, is it flip six three hole? Yeah. Is the next yeah. play, which I looked up. Turns out it's actually a song by a uh, American band called American Goner. All oh, right. Okay. You assume on the back of this. Yeah. Well, there was no yeah. such, <laughs> there was no such play I checked. Yeah. Okay. Well, well good, uh, good. Good, good research. <laughs> well, my algorithm is all right because I, I usually put flip six three hole in somewhere. It just comes up with <laughs> other subjects. So. <laughs> I'm glad they got songs. <laughs> uh, this play that they run, uh, Rico scores by jumping over players. I don't know, does that like rocket boots or something? Mm. Um, and the players run into one another and he scores in the last minute and they win. So, He's back at home. Mum and dad are really unhappy that he wants to join federal service. They're absolutely loaded. And they want him to go to Harvard. Uh, they try and convince him not to go by offering him a, a holiday in like, yeah. the Outer Rims or something. Uh, <laughs> the Outer <laughs> Rim. Was it Zegama Beach they were offering to go to? Oh, right. Yeah. I had a wee look at, which is a, a record label um, just now. So a bit of influence from the movie. Oh, there nice. Go. Okay, it's it's got some wide ranging influence. This film, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of things have been influenced by it. Mm-hmm. Not gone by my uh, three hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the dance, Rico firmly puts Diz in the friend zone, doesn't he? Oh yeah. Uh, and then runs over to see the teacher. You're like, God, you such a virgin. <laughs> uh, really teacher is. rad check. Uh, what what should I do? You know, I want to join, but my parents don't want me to. Uh, and he says, it's up to you to make your decision. The only It's the only freedom you have in life. So the next day, they go and they sign up. Now, my question for you is, why was Doogie Hauser at college? Why was he back at college? Because he'd already been to college at the age of, like, fucking 13. Medical college and then uh, graduated. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, my question is, why the hell is Xander there? He just appeared at the prom at an area. Uh, yeah, he yeah he said he said yeah it's my last last day of freedom. I'm going to uh, I'm I'm joining like the school. flying school as well. You're like okay, but, but he didn't know who he was. That's the thing. She just met him, so I was just wondering what the hell was going on. Because it looked as if they might have been from different schools. So I looked this up, but you yeah. can invite someone from a different school to your prom as long as they're approved and they've not been suspended from their high school. <laughs> 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 so you can't take a bad boy. <laughs> 
It sounds like the rules of Battle Royale, that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bring a friend, but only if no been suspended. Or and, uh, and, money and, the, and the other guy can come because he won last year. <laughs> <laughs> had, had we been a bit younger, lads, I think the reference would have probably been uh, the Hunger Games, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't know. Yeah, don't go down that road. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, the hung, they're not very hungry games. That's me. <laughs> Three uh, fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen gets pilot. Carl gets games and theory, which I was like, oh, games and theory, that sounds interesting. It's intelligence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Rico gets infantry. And the, the guy behind the counter is like, good for you, son. It made me the man I am today. And he's only got one arm. And, and two and he, and away. He and he likes. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, that guy is uh, is the doctor out of uh, CSI. He's the uh, one of the guys that's in, with a beard. One of the pathologists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I looked up enlisting. Um, looking at enlisting in the UK, if you enlist in the army, you can do two, three, or six years. But active duty for uh, the USA is a minimum of eight years. Oh, wow. right. Okay. 85 countries worldwide have some form of obligatory military training. France was the first modern nation to state uh, a nation state to introduce mandatory conscription as a condition of citizenship to provide forces for the French Revolution. And dodging the draft is punishable with up to two years in prison in Russia. Ah, me and my flat feet. <laughs> <laughs> they make a vow to be f- friends forever. Uh, and Carl says, we may never see one another again. And I was like, yeah, except in every second scene where you all meet up <laughs> I know. all the time. <laughs> friends forever. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very 90s thing, isn't it? The whole friends pack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's always the same shot as well. It's always their standing proper side by uh, side. She's the middle in. hugging them both. Hey, your pals. Yeah. I, I'm amazed it wasn't a freeze frame as they all jumped in the air. Yeah. Had their legs behind them. Yeah. <laughs> His parents cut him off. Uh, and he says goodbye to Carmen, tells her he loves her. She's not going to say it. <laughs> like she, she, She's away to pilot school. Yeah. <laughs> While she gets go, gets to go to pilot school, he ends up in fucking major pain, doesn't he? he ends oh, up God, aye. The, we, like, we, awful <laughs> thing. We missed her crabs as a drill instructor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> as soon as he started shouting, I thought, oh, my God, it's Mr. Crabs. Yeah, the, Cl- the, uh, the, the Kurgan himself. Clancy Brown, eh? Fan favourite, episode. fan favourite. Yeah, absolutely. Previous episode. It goes to the channel, and there's this execution live on TV tonight, which is kind of like, he, he was done for murder, and he's being executed. 6pm. Every channel. <laughs> Every channel. Go I out. know. Um, these kids are being given guns, which I thought was pretty good, and they're all, they're all laughing. And, and then the news report is that these Mormons set up a base on this planet, and all you see is like oh, these yeah. ripped apart corpses and blood. Extreme yeah. Mormons. Then yeah. extreme Mormons. Your like, golden what? plates didn't save you this time, Joseph Smith, did they? Mor- Mormon extremists. That, that is what the guy says. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just thought that's just beautiful. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> As we've said, Zim's the gunnery sergeant. Uh, he, he basically says, does anybody want to fight me? And he fights this guy, breaks his arm. Who's next? Uh, and Diz comes, she turns up. She's asked to be transferred, possibly because she's wanting to get fired in. This group of recruits includes Jake Busey, back again for his second yeah. spell on this podcast, and his massive fucking teeth. <laughs> God, me uh, a score of. <laughs> <laughs> he's called Ace, and he's got guile hair. Oh, he really does, doesn't he? He really does look like... Uh, like Probably everybody's second favourite Street Fighter character. Yeah, apart from Ryu. Everyone else likes Ryu, yeah. I'm a, Ryu, yeah, yeah Ryu. I think that's, yeah, that's a given. That's a given. <laughs> um, Ace and Rico want to be squad leader, and they're kind of running across this um, this this obstacle and, and moaning about the it. Kind Krypton of factor, about. of course. <laughs> He's the Krypton factor, of course. <laughs> uh, and then Diz comes by and just basically knocks them out on this kind of... Yeah. You see, why were they not using that? Why were they busy climbing and... Jumping through mud when they should just be on that. She was just using her brain instead of brawn. They're now doing throwing knives, right? (laughs) Which I was well and truly into. Uh, I'd I'd love to go go and learn how to throw knives. That would be uh, uh, be good for me. They're throwing these knives. They're not very good at it. 
he Bushy's no very good at it. He's the only one that missed. Yeah, he he misses, and he says, "Well, why do I need to do this when we're um, when when we just when we just throw a nuke down the hole and blow them up?" Zim throws one through his hand, doesn't he? Stick to the water. We're in the shower now. This mixed shower, which is um, pretty, uh, that's pretty hot, isn't it? <laughs> just for me, I was all right with that. Yeah, uh, in this in this mixed shower, and we learn who all these characters are. Oh, the, the director was in there with them as well, apparently. All oh, right, okay. He was in the shower with them all. Pervy Naked. bastard. <laughs> Naked. Uh, this character, Breathridge, he's basically a, a like a, a big dumb lad, and he he's a farmer. Doesn't right. want to be a farmer like his parents. And the only way to, to do that is to join this. Um, Degenerate, I think it was, she wants to get into politics. Sajimi, he's got into Harvard, but dad won't pay for it. So if he does two years, the country has to pay for it. That sounds a bit dear, doesn't it? Yeah, not that far. Uh, yeah. And this character, who I don't think has a name, because I couldn't find a name anywhere, wants a license to have babies. Yeah, and I checked that out. Nowhere in the world do you need to have a license to have a baby, but yeah, oh. <laughs> it's just double checking. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so got one, Jim, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. I missed a couple of things here. I've got to, uh, I've, I've, I've got to share with you. Throwing knives, uh, you can buy Golan Kunai throwing knife set, 12 pieces for twenty nine ninety nine on the knifewarehouse.co.uk. You can also buy a throwing axe for nineteen ninety nine if you want. Are we sponsored by them now? Uh, <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? That would be fantastic. Um, we talked briefly about the uh, American football. I can't believe I've got all my notes here and I, I missed it. The American football, and I said it was a little bit like Speedball 2. Uh, yeah. I looked into Speedball because I'd forgotten all about it. Um, 1990 video game based on a violent, futuristic cyberpunk sport. Uh, the Bitmap Brothers developed this, Chaos Engine, Magic Pockets, and oh, Gods. Oh, Jesus. Chaos Engine was a Chaos Engine was solid, though, wasn't it? Uh, Gods it was, was a, awesome. It was Amiga for me for that one. Very, very hard. I've just realised I've actually written down, where I was writing down Beastmaster earlier on, I've written down Beatmaster, which is actually Shamu. Yeah, that's what you're thinking of Shamu. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, injuries in football, the worst injuries in American football, very briefly, August the 12th, 1972. Daryl Stingley, Daryl, a New England Patriots wide receiver, became paralysed from that head-to-head hit with Oakland Raiders' Jack Tatum. The injury left him paralysed from the chest down. Arizona Cardinal safety Rashad Johnson uh, didn't find out he'd lost the tip of his middle finger until he went to take off his glove after he'd covered a punt return against the States. He lost it in the glove? He lost, <clears throat> yeah, he, he lost the tip of his finger in the glove. Jesus, how does that even work? They stay in touch by video messages, Rico. Well, everybody does, I guess, around yeah. the world. But Rico and Carmen stay in touch by these video messages. Uh, Carmen gets his video and they're all carrying on and misbehaving. It was, it was that wee mini disc ahead, wasn't it? Is it did look like a mini disc. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Man, I loved my mini disc player, by the way. Uh, yeah. mini player. Did you see the lassie that is is not in this film, but but is part of the Flying Academy with Carmen? Yes, it was um, Amy Smart. Smart from yeah. um, Jason Stratham. Fuck film, wasn't it? What is that one called? Yeah. We had to keep going. Uh, crank. Yeah, Crank. That's, That's a it. great movie. Yeah, great movie. But I was actually thinking she's been in a previous episode. She is got on her way to Boston, Massachusetts. Oh God, so she was. Not Austin, Massachusetts. Sorry. Yeah, road yeah. trip. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But again, she's not in this film. She got like two lines. <laughs> I know, not. pretty much it. Two yeah. two scenes and gone. Yeah. They're going on their first date to fly. Carmen's really reckless, but she's quite good. The models here look brilliant, by the way. I was really into the. Oh models. no, I was impressed with it as well. Yeah, yeah. As they dock into this Empire Star Destroyer, I uh, yep. really liked that. Um, the person leading her is Xander from the uh, from the speedball game that we talked about. Yep. Of course, she's like, oh, "What are the chances?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm a fucking stalker." <laughs> so he's like, he's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'd heard that some fit bird was uh, <laughs> was was being was being a bit reckless, and uh, I thought I'm going to see if I can uh, 
good in that. Stick, stick, stick it in a star drive. Which yeah. doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, she takes this 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 boat out like the guy in Galaxy Quest. You know, yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. it's like Ooh. five meters, one meter. You're like that is you're like looking at it going. That's like know. probably a hundred yards. That that's more than a meter. There was no need for it anyway. <laughs> no. Uh, we're back at training and the Jarheads are doing laser quest. Uh, Diz says to do the speedball move uh, and they capture the flag. Uh, this place that they were doing it, by the way, with all the tents and things, it looked like fucking fire fest. I expected, yeah, was, I expected Jar Rule to not turn up at any time. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit weird, wasn't it? Because there was like white tents everywhere. I'm like, what yeah. the hell is going on? <laughs> I was absolutely certain that, uh, that it was just going to be full of... Uh, People complaining that they couldn't get a uh, seat. <laughs> they had, had, had to cheese, sam- cheese slice sandwiches. <laughs> or I paid for a sweet. Where's my sweet? There's your tent. Get in your tent. <laughs> get your tent your bottle of water, you prick. <laughs> That's where we're, we'll be on the next one of those. We'll be on that one uh, in Vegas, you know, the emo one that everybody's kind of going on about. <laughs> I think that I'm pretty uh, sure is the next fire festival. I think it's the next fire fest. It's too good this, to be true, isn't it? This, this is going to age really well, this, lads. And people are going to go, fucking hell, they called it. They <laughs> <We> called it. <laughs> they fucking called it. <laughs> so the, the shock the shock laser tag. Yeah. Um, so it does actually exist. Um, a company does it down in Kent called Hypershock. Oh, right. Um, uh, yeah, so laser tag that gives you a shock while you're playing for adults. Yeah, there used to be one in Glasgow. But, <laughs> but um, people get trying to shoot each other in the eyes. <laughs> so <they get> <laughs> <laughs> we used to be called Laser Quest. That was quite a shock. <laughs> T- taser Quest. They're missing <laughs> a trick there, boys. I know I have. <laughs> yeah, get, write that down. Don't let anyone nick that. <laughs> nah, so Rico, make... Rico gets a squad, didn't he? Out of that? Rico he, uh... does get a squad, mate. You're absolutely right. Um, and then he gets a video from her. She dumps him, but she she she's she's going. You know, it's I, I got your message. It was so good to get your message. And then and then she walks over to this thing and she's like, "Look at those stars." I'm kind of what is is this a fucking TED talk? What's going on? Here? What happened? It was, I think it's obviously uh, she's obviously had time to think about relationship because it's two separate. She's wearing all different stuff, but uh, it's like literally just walking over to this beautiful scene, going, "I love this scene," but you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look at I look at this wonderful massive work, this massive universe in front of me, and I think you're just a jarhead. See ya, son. <laughs> See ya. Um, and he's heartbroken because it really is truly the only reason. He joined, but she wants a ship of her own. Um, and the next yeah. day, they do this live ammo test. And this is the bit that always sticks in my head from this film. Yeah, it, it sticks in somebody's head, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Breathridge has got this helmet issue. I mean, we've all been there, lads, right? Uh, <laughs> R- Rico grabs it uh, ooh, uh, to fix it. And Breathridge gets shot in the face, doesn't he? Yeah, it, looks, yeah. Great. it looks really good. Yeah, it still is, Will. Bit rubbery, bit bit rubbery, but I know it's good. <laughs> yeah, he gets written up, um, and two of his squad quit. And the guy that's writing him up's Hank from Breaking Bad. I saw I as that. He looks quite young, <laughs> doesn't he? He sentences him to ten lashes. <laughs> yeah, so in the camp. there's a few things about all this. So the military trainer checked that out. Uh, most live live ammunition is used on a practice range. However, you can also be used in live ammunition in a live firing battlefield exercise um, for a live firing scenario with increased risk. So I think what they do is they put them in scenarios, but they have to have live ammo round about so they can obviously feel adrenaline. But I want to do it. I want to do it. No, not in a, not in a million years. <laughs> no, no thanks. Uh, as for whipping, uh, during the American Revolutionary War, the American Congress raised the legal limit on lashes from 39 to 100 for soldiers yeah. who were convicted by court martial. Right, I was going to say that because I looked. Up, well, I looked at the Judea, 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 Judaism. Judean People's Front. Yes, that's it. <laughs> it's for you to say. Um, so, because they're going to give them uh, administrative punishment. Yeah. There's no such thing in, in military. It's called uh, non-judicial punishment. Uh, but non-judicial punishment is a form of punishment that may be applied to individual military personnel without the need for a court. 
or any proceedings whatsoever. Oh, really? um, looking at that, you were saying 39, but yeah, it used to be that they would give them lashes in uh, sets of three, um, up to 39. However, um, it turns out that if the person given the lashes deems that the person's unfit to take them all, they, they would actually use their judgment to, to apply how many they think that they could take. Because if they think they're too weak, they, they probably couldn't have taken 39 lashes. All right, wow. So the person giving them could actually decrease them at their judgment. Okay. Medically supervised caning is routinely ordered by the courts as a penalty for some categories of crime in Singapore, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Tanzania and Zimbabwe. And Govan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you better believe Only it. in Govan Cross. Nowhere else. <laughs> I think the only thing that's getting tanned down there is bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. And lashes and lashes of grapes. <laughs> um, we're back on Spaceball One now with uh, Carmen and Xander. By the way, this Xander guy looks like Rob Lowe's non union equivalent. Yes, to me. that's exactly. <laughs> I thought he was at first. I thought, oh my God, it's his brother. But I'm glad Xander. I wasn't alone on that one. They're doing this night shift. She's plotted a new course, yep. and he turns around and says, "You think you can lick my navs?" Oh, that's, that's a euphemism a thing. <laughs> euphemism and a half that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, if you, by the way, while we're on that subject, if you wanted to be, uh, if you wanted to join the air force in the UK, I know you'd mentioned John that you'd looked at it mm -hmm. um, as a uh, as a pilot. Yeah, so yep. if you want to join the Air Force in the UK, you need five GCSE Cs, including English and Maths, and you can't have been tried of any race-related offences, which is fair. Um, mm, and sure. after specialist training, you get £42,000 a year, which is not too shabby, right? That's decent for our starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that'll do for now. Yeah, that'll do as a start. Thanks, guys. You've peaked my interest. Get me to this, get me to this job, <laughs> Want to learn more? <laughs> if you want to become a commercial pilot in the UK, you'll need an airline transport pilot license, an ATPL, and a class one medical certificate. The minimum age to commence pilot training is 18, but you cannot get a license until you're 21. It can take 16 to 18 months to qualify as a pilot if you've no previous flying experience. And a two year part time modular route is also available, allowing you to work while you train. Training can cost anything between 70,000 and 120,000 pounds. Jesus. You wouldn't bother, would you? Nah. Just, to go, just to go and work at Ryanair? No thanks. Nah, that's mummy and daddy's money, that is. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, go and work for the CIA. I know Schwarzenegger got to do it for free and bloody that um, film with the, the Harrier jump jet. True lies. True lies, yeah. True lies. That's you could fly in. That's a great <laughs> film. So her course is optimal. So it's absolutely fine that she should be licking his navs. Um, oh. They're given the job to work together. Mm -hmm. And then we discover that an asteroid's heading at them. Carmen moves the ship and only basically the top bit, the comms array. Yeah, gets knackered by the uh, by the thing, which is a very very important part of what's about to happen. Yeah, because at first I was like, why are they not telling the world? But turns out they can because of the uh, communications array. Yeah, the last known asteroid uh, impact of an an object ten kilometers or more in diameter was the Cretaceous extinction event sixty six million years ago, and every year the Earth is hit by about six thousand one hundred meteors large enough to reach the ground. Or about 17 a day, research revealed. Apparently, most of them fall unnoticed in uninhabited areas or into the, into the sea, basically. Cool. Back at the camp, Rico's heading down Washout Lane in the... No, he's taking not, the walk. Not a real street, just so you know. Uh, I've, <laughs> I'm adding that to the list. It's not a real street. It's just, a, just the, the way out. It's, the, it's like the door. Yeah. And his mum and dad, he rings his mum and dad, basically, to uh, to forgive him. They're willing to take him back. But then the sky gets really dark. Oh, looks like rain. Fuck <laughs> and, and Buenos Aires. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. um, 
And as he's as he's leaving, as he's going, uh, it turns out that the whole of Buenos Aires, where all these white people are from, by the way, yes, I thought I has, remember that has been destroyed by this uh, the, the asteroid. <laughs> all these white Americans, loads yeah. of them, because <laughs> that's where the school was and everything, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, I think pretty sure they're meant to be Brazilian. <laughs> uh, not a fat Ronaldo amongst them. <laughs> not a one. <laughs> And the, uh, the the woman that wants all the kids, the character that wants all the kids, uh, the goddamn bugs whacked us, Johnny. Oh, <laughs> no, that's terrible, isn't it? I just sheer, like, oh, just They're cringe, bad. aren't they? I love them. They're bad. Um, that, that watch your malfunction really annoyed the fuck out of me for about an hour. <laughs> like, watch your malfunction? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that, we declare war on the bugs. Of course we do. Rico is back in. Uh, Zim rips up his resignation, and yeah. this advert is these kids squashing cockroaches and laughing, while the laughing mum watches them. <laughs> yeah, some of them were fake, but I think they squished their live one by mistake, because I was watching oh. one, and I think they caught it with a heel. Oh, so right, they... okay. <laughs> they a real one. It, it, just, it just made me think of that, that bit at the end of Men in Black, you know, where he's squashing all the cockroaches. No, oh, I was thinking... The agar suit. I was, yeah. I was thinking about Joe's, Joe's apartment. Oh, reason. man, that's one we need to watch again soon. Absolutely. Uh, back in deep space, and um, they're all ready to ship out. Rico sees Carmen with Xander. Uh, they tear it up a bit, don't they? They throw each other about a little bit and all then right. get separated. Uh, and then the Jarheads get the shittest tattoos in the world. <laughs> so they do. I couldn't even read what it was. It was death something or other. Death from above. Oh, was Ooh, it? Oh, well all right. Well spotted. You must have watched that, watched that in HD. Yeah. That was country, yeah. really. I, was, I love how you said shit is tattoo, and I was like, I've always wanted to get that. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks for that one. Guess <laughs> what okay, so he's getting. Mate, I've got a good forest tattoo. I know about shit tattoos. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just need a wee uh, Taz beside it, and that'll be you. <laughs> 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 Mum and dad, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, I did that tattoo as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they dropped onto this planet, uh, and all the while, these bug batteries are basically new. so. These bugs basically spunk shit rocks into yeah. The space. Yeah, shoot bug plasma into space. Yeah, right. As you do. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's, there's not going to be many. It's just going to be light. You know, we're not expecting too many. And then out of nowhere, it's all just... the ships start getting destroyed. Aye, yeah. <laughs> crashing into one another and all sorts of things. Um, it, Carmen steers them safe. And then on the planet, there's thousands of infantry. And it's it, it's very much, very reminiscent of uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan, isn't it? That opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Except not quite as good as that opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Uh, I still still think on a weekly basis about the guy that takes his hat off to have a look at his helmet that saved him uh, and then gets shot in the head. I, I think know. about that all the time. <laughs> a great scene. <laughs> Do you expect Alanis Morissette to be standing right beside him? <laughs> like, ah, isn't that ironic? <laughs> <laughs> and for, for his mate to be dragging the corpse away, going, it's not ironic, Alanis. <laughs> it's just really unfortunate. <laughs> uh, looks like Sajimi isn't going to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck laughs> it is. All these arachnids come out and slice him to bits, and the other one isn't having babies. She falls into this fucking pit and starts getting eaten. Um, no. They retreat for retrieval. Um, there's a guy from the start of the film, you know, that it's an ugly planet. A uh, that, planet. I like that. I like the, the way that tied, and it was quite cool. So did I. I like the fact we were now we're, we're now and now we're into the, the film again, and and he's back. Uh, we see that that started. footage from a third person perspective. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, the the camera the camera goes dead. The camera goes to static. I'd noticed on that, and I you know I got all smart and uh, 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 we don't get static anymore. The reason we don't get static anymore is because of digital signals. Digital, yeah, digital signals. those days are gone. Yeah. So if this is meant to be in the future, I hope somebody got fired for that <laughs> blunder. <laughs> mm. Yes. Mm. They they jump back into these back into these these they keep calling them the boats don't they uh, um, but not before rico is trying to take them all down gets stabbed in the leg by an arachnid and then seemingly eaten <laughs> yeah but uh, there's a, a shadow over his shoulder i don't know if you noticed but see when no, you I actually didn't. watch it see the second when you actually watch it see when he's looking at them coming yeah. there's something at the back of him over his shoulder that casts a shadow so I'm, i suspect it's whoever it is that saved them 
Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler for later. <laughs> All right. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, back to the newsreel, 100,000 dead in one hour. Um, there's this argument on TV that there's a hive mind. This char- this actor looked like somebody, and I just I know. couldn't. I couldn't get it. It wasn't anybody. Yeah, nah. he looked a bit like Pee Wee Herman, didn't he? Yeah, he Cross did. between Pee Wee Herman and... Uh, Must have been. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, this brain bug uh, that they're talking about. On the space station, Carmen's checking the names of the dead, and it's uh, there's just this register of dead, and you can just go up to it and type a name in, and it comes up in huge letters. I mean, that seems very distressing. But this is this is what I got with me about that whole scene. So they're walking by all these wounded people screaming legs off, and she's like, "Oh, why are there hardly any wounded lads? Like, because they kill them all." Like, but they're surrounded by all these wounded people. <laughs> well, there's why, are folk there? <laughs> why are you talking shit, mate? Why are you talking shit? <laughs> uh, Rico was. Ke- K-I-A, killed in action. Not uh, W-I-A. M-I-A, or wounded in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. Wounded in action. But he was... Uh, no, on his it said killed in action. I but only wanted to look, because I was looking at them, as, it's, K-I-A, it's K-I-A, but then there was a W-I-A. Ah, right, like, yeah. Oh, that's that's obviously wounded. Maybe somebody's she, not paying attention. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she she sobs, obviously. She's, she's heartbroken at this. Um, turns out he's actually alive in the next scene, and in this 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 tank, Star Wars back to tank, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> Boba Fett. <laughs> uh, they're fixing his leg wound, which looks brilliant, uh, and then Diz and Ace are kind of at the at the the, the the thing going. Look, you were killed in action. So, like, what? I know why. Was he dead? Yeah, yeah. Like, what is? Oh, I don't understand. Universal um, soldier all over again, buddy. Oh <laughs> man, I wish. Uh, <laughs> So Rico, Diz and Ace are now put into this new team, the Roughnecks. Uh, yeah. And the lieutenant saved everybody's life on, on the team. And we find out it's who? Uh, it's um, Ironside, Michael Ironside. It, it is. It's the teacher. Yeah, Michael yeah. Ironside. Uh, and at no point does he pull open his shirt and have a little kind of, like, little little brother kind of, ah, nah, 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 <laughs> which is disappointing. Very disappointing. <laughs> I would argue that's how he lost the hand because that little <laughs> at his hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, "I've got one rule: everybody fights, no one quits, or I shoot you." <laughs> that was a great line, and Simple. basically, it, Rico nicks that later on, doesn't he? Which was very yeah, disappointing. yeah, very disappointing. He did. They carpet bomb this planet, this planet P or whatever it's called. Yeah, uh, very. Very smart writing, that planet. No, oh, yeah, planet P. Yeah, but they get rid of the sky marshal, didn't they? Because uh, the last one was shit, and didn't foresee that everybody re- dying. Yeah, they're replacing with another one who wants to <laughs> to to understand what the bugs are doing. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, so I, I, wants I, to understand what the bugs are doing by bombing them to death. I know. Let's just kill them, <laughs> see what happens. But I, I googled uh, military sky marshal. Well, there isn't such a thing. No sky marshal is a person that sits on a plane, kidding who he's an empty. We are we are gone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I did exactly the same job. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, they're there to counter aircraft hijackings. They don't do a very good job. Pay seems to be between ninety six thousand and one hundred eighteen thousand scale. Uh, that's uh, dollars US, of course. The roughnecks are on the ground now, picking off the odd bug. This this guy really hates this bug. He shoots it in the eye and calls it monkey sucking bag of maggot puke. <laughs> and he shoots it in the eye, and this eye just explain explodes into green guts all over it. Yeah. And that's Gabriel Fear, The Walking Dead, isn't it? Is it really right? Wow. I've, I've, I've kind of fallen off that show. So, <laughs> so did I, but I remember him. I didn't click at all because I was looking at him thinking I'm. I, mean, oh, I, uh, know, I know. As soon as I was like, I know that face, and then it just dawned on me. That, that just shows you how old this is. No, well, I can, he looks fat, <laughs> didn't he? Apart from that big slash in his tummy. <laughs> <laughs> they nuke a nest, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, but then this tanker, they call them tankers, comes at them. And this is this massive kind of hard-shelled beetle. Yeah, like a proper uh, beetle. Yeah, that spunks lava out of its face at them. Yeah. Uh, Rico jumps on its back, shoots a hole in its shell, and then drops a grenade in. It looks like he drops a grenade into a pool of orange juice, doesn't it? That's it just splashes like, yeah. everywhere. Like, like, what is this bug made of? And it's then the whole thing just explodes. <laughs> it's like seeing it at James the Giant Peach when it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone just covered in all this orange stuff. It was indeed. <laughs> uh, good double feature, this this and James and the Giant Peach. Yay. Plenty of bugs. Uh, basically blows its ass out of uh, out, out, out of the, the, the place to me. He says... 
the chief says, Ironside says, I need a corporal, Rico. Um, you're it until you die or I find better, which is a great <laughs> line that Rico steals in a couple of scenes time. Yeah, he's the originality of that boy, has he? That night at the camp, uh, he gives them beer, kegs of beer and football. Yes. Like footballs. <laughs> uh, I was like, do you like beer? And football, <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, your man Busey gets a uh, gets a, a fiddle. Oh, I guess a fiddle, all right? No, I think Rico gets a fiddle. <laughs> uh, Diz wants to dance with him, but he's not having any of it. Like he threatens her, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like a uh, threat. And Radchek said, "You once asked me for advice. Here it is: never pass up a good thing." And only because his teacher said it, and he's got such a massive hard on for his teacher, does he go and shag her? Yeah. Uh, kind of like you bad. are, you are thinking about your teacher while you're doing that, aren't you? Don't. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you're thinking about, Michael Ironside. <laughs> and his little. Uh, they they go into the into the tent, and just as they're getting it on, <laughs> Lieutenant signals that they've had a distress call. They're moving out in in five minutes. He sees that he's Flores. He's like, make it twenty. <laughs> Man, enough time to do it three times. Twenty Lucky minutes, boy. Uh, and Lucky I checked, boy. I checked the average of this. I checked the average. So, in a relationship, through your your any relationship, you have sex between uh, it's, it's forty four seconds, which I, I think's bullshit, and um, forty four minutes. So, average out. They say that's that certainly they, bullshit, and that's not <laughs> bullshit. They say it averages out. So, actually, everybody says average amount of um, time it takes of sex is five point four minutes. That's actually throughout our, our relationship so okay. i don't know how, how long you guys can last but i can last more than 5.4 minutes to be honest i'm like you saying bolt mate once i'm out of the <laughs> gate <laughs> once once you're done and you're done <laughs> once, once i'm out of the gate i've got the little uh the little gold crucifix swinging around you know doing a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Man. It would be funny if it wasn't so fucking depressing. <laughs> funny, but funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so the next morning they're in this this canyon, <laughs> basically, aren't they? Uh, kind of looking uh, desperate to kind of find out what's going on. This guy who's doing the radio, the sergeant, gets up on a on a higher place and gets picked off by this flying thing. Yeah, straight away, straight after yeah. that. It's uh. Grabs him and, and I think I thought it was taking it to its nest or something. I it was just that. seemingly eating him or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Ironside shoots him instead of the bug, and he said, "I'd expect you to do the same for me." There's a bit of foreshadowing no, for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Rico is now the acting sergeant. They get to this outpost, and it's just corpses, nothing but corpses. Um, some have had their brains sucked out, which l- looked pretty good. Yeah, um, and this general's been hiding in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, what a dick. <laughs> he was brilliant. I, I liked him because he was just done, wasn't he? he was uh, just I had to hide because I know too much. Uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, the bugs made them call the distress signal because they're smarter than you think. Um, and it's then, a trap. It's a that's trap. It. Turns out it, it's a trap. Turns out it's a trap. These huge kind of it's the the main kind of. The, the, the warrior ones are the arachnids, aren't they? They keep yeah. calling them the arachnids. Uh, arachnids are joint-legged invertebrates that include spiders, daddy long legs, scorpions, mites, and ticks. Daddy long legs, surely not the real name for them. I think they're called crane flies or something. But daddy <laughs> long legs just makes them seem a bit nice. more useless. Than Jenny them. long legs, isn't it? It's like, oh, that sounds really nice. <laughs> the of the sky. <laughs> That's right. There's a few more of these tankers here, and, and and I wasn't sure if the tankers were the ones that spit the stuff up into in space, uh, but or if that was different creatures. But I couldn't find any creatures that hurl spores, even though they talk about these insects hurling the spores into space. Uh, yeah, yeah. What I did find, though, because I'm a fucking nerd, is that in D and D fifth edition, players can play as a druid of the circle of spores who has the ability to control and throw spores as a weapon. I don't know. Yeah, a geek. But, but that's the closest I can find. It's the closest <laughs> I can find to insects. There's no insects that do it. Uh, they basically get surrounded. It's like fucking Rourke's Drift, isn't it? Yeah. It's like Zulu. Hey, stop throwing those arachnids at me. <laughs> you know, Jesus. It's, they are absolutely done for. Um, and then the flying ones come in and start cutting, like, blokes' heads off. That was yeah. brilliant. That right. was really good. Yeah, you thought the first guy had seen the first one and went, oh, hang on, I better duck. Yeah, yeah, he just, yeah, he just, yeah, he just carries <laughs> on, completely oblivious. 
They kill most of the soldiers and then make it into the compound. Uh, the rescue craft turns up and it's Carmen and Xander. Just as it lands, one of these big, huge beasts from below rips the lieutenant in two and Rico puts him out of his misery by putting a bullet in his brain. Yep, yep. And then more drama just to get yeah. on the ship. Yeah, they blow up this, this tanker. It just blows up this tanker. And then she celebrates like she's just scored the fucking winning touchdown. <laughs> Only for this this arachnid to come and run her through about five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they shit, they shit their legs off it. She's got one stuck in her. Yeah. And they just, first thing they do is pull it out. Never pull yeah, it out. Never pull, pull it out. You're absolutely never pull right. It out. Story of my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> never will do it. They fly to safety, but Dizzy's done. She's done for. Um, the next scene, they're basically doing Spock in Wrath of Khan funeral, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so, That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Of all the gingers, I knew she was the most human. That's kind of a bit bit of a dig at gingers there. Sorry, listeners. Uh, I'm not editing that out. Uh, (laughs) Now, this is where it got really fucking weird for me. Carl turns up with his mates dressed as the space SS. The Gestapo, eh, isn't it? It's like, (laughs) what the fuck is going on here? Hello, hello, isn't it? (laughs) Hello, (laughs) hello. Hair flick. (laughs) <laughs> Von Smallhausen. Oh yeah, now you're talking. Flip <laughs> bloop. <laughs> oh, they're funny. Apparently, Neil Patrick Harris was nicknamed Doogie Himmler because of the <laughs> uniform. In the- <laughs> which is brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'd say you couldn't write that, but somebody evidently had. <laughs> <laughs> Doogie Himmler, brilliant. It's Love it. <laughs> Uh, he'd sent them to Planet P because he was on the understanding that there was a brain bug there and he's sending them back to get the brain bug. Everyone's really pissed off except for Rico, who I think just wants to die. Aye, uh, like, Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, uh, what we do. My, my bird doesn't like me. Diaz, does his deed. What's the point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, they make him the new lieutenant and he recycles all the lines from earlier on. Uh, and, and the new recruits are fresh out of school, right? And they look like, I don't know, it's kind of like that kid at the beginning, <laughs> you know, who's trying to help. Uh, they look like him. But my my question is, because Ace says, oh, yeah, they're fresh out of school. You lot were fresh out of school like 40 minutes ago in this film. Yeah. And, and you lot You're have all got that. like five o'clock shadows. What's yeah. going on? I know. Chiseled, sculpted yeah. with the guns. Everything's <laughs> on. <all time. laughs> How many years were they held back? That's my question. I mean, I know we shit at maths, but, you know. 35%, though. Come on. <laughs> it's better than I would do. Um, they're above the planet, and the cruisers are getting ripped apart again by the space spunk. Uh, Carmen and Xander's uh, one gets absolutely destroyed, and they escape on this tiny little escape pod, which is quite blatantly just being shaken uh, uh, by a couple of blokes. Uh, I, just, I, just, I, just, I thought it was like the create things for the running man. See with the rigging, rigging. <laughs> Slap them in and send them away. That's what I thought it was like. Oh, man, we watched The Running Man again at the weekend while we were away. It's still so good. So oh, good, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, oh there's, there's nothing bad in that. Maybe yeah, Mick yeah. Fleetwood. Maybe Mick Fleetwood. Yeah, but other than that, it's just... Uh, oh, it's... Yeah, it's just... And it all came true. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> they crash through into this massive cave full of them, and they radio Rico and the team and give the location. They hold off the bugs for a little while with these guns, which are in this fantastic little section, aren't they? They just yeah. break open the section and pull out the guns. Uh, but they get incapacitated by these these bugs, and then this massive slug thing comes out at them. It's like a fucking grub, doesn't it? Uh, and it's got a gross. vagina for a face, uh, which, was, <laughs> which is very off-putting. Now, <laughs> if I read more, like Freud and all that kind of stuff, then I probably would have put a few things together from this, but yeah. I, I've not read any of that. No, I think it's all nonsense. So I don't know. But this thing comes out, and it's got like a scythe dick that comes out. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And goes into your man it's Xander's head. head. Uh, but before it can, he says, one day someone like me is going to kill you. <laughs> I was like, brilliant. <laughs> and then it just starts sucking his brain out. You see it going right. up the... Of the thing. Oh, it's pretty it good, though. Yeah, it yeah, it looked great. Uh, but his face, he's like, he's, he's having a massive orgasm. <laughs> his brain <laughs> sucked out of his, oh, his head. It's, it's, it's filthy, this, or is it just me? I What's going some... on? Is it just me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
carbon. It's about to do the same to carbon. She slices that off, and all the brain juice goes everywhere. Um, you see, brain juice. Well, look, I, I, I wish I wish I knew deep down what all that meant. I really do, <laughs> listeners. Please, if you've read any of that kind of stuff, tell us. Um, they're about to kill Carmen. These the rest of these arachnids, and Rico turns up with this nuke, and he's like, right, "You know what this is?" And I was like. It's like fucking Leia in Jabba's palace, this. Aye, that's that's the thermal detonator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this bounty hunter is my kind of scum, is a line <laughs> I've always liked. Uh, but I don't speak... I know I'm a fat bastard, but I don't speak uh, Jabba, so I can't... I don't speak Hutties. So yeah, you, you fucking what a nerd. I even know what the language is called. Talk, you talk Jabberish. <laughs> <laughs> I talk plenty of shite. I know that much. The brain bug makes a run for it. Oh, it's actually carried, isn't it, by all uh, these, these little scurrying bugs. And they make their way out. They blow up the rest of them. And as they get outside, the roughnecks have captured the brain bug in one of those nets you used to keep your onions in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Carl comes in and touches it. And he's like, it's afraid. Of course it is. It shut itself when you went anywhere near it. Uh, and she cut its nose off. That's the point. You'd be afraid, wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> you just had your fucking crown jewels cut off. Um, they're going to use the brains to outthink them. It was Zim that captured them, by the way. Zim Zim yeah. dropped himself down to private. Yeah. So Crab, Crab's, fight. Crab's caught the brain. <laughs> and it ends with this recruitment video. And, and, and this thing that, uh, you know, we're going to do tests and they shove a massive metal spike into its face. I'm like, oh, that's a yeah, yeah, as a bit, uh, it shows them experimenting on it, but I mean, it jabbed it and you're like, ooh. See, I love how they, like, they show you the, like, the front face, but then they censor them when they're stabbing it. Like, <laughs> nah, they did it in the, the movie, same, like. The same with the cow. The exact same with the cow. Yeah, like, there's like half bodies everywhere and then they're suddenly prodding this bug and it's censored. <laughs> that's, that's, that's American TV for you, boys. <laughs> it's just the case. Uh, Google, I'm going to be honest with you. I have got loads and loads and loads of stuff here that I didn't manage to fit in. So, John, do you want to go? F- in fact, Shamu, do you want to go first, mate? What, anything that we missed? So, the Perspex violin. Um, it's actually quite a famous brand called Tucker Barrett, who makes electric fiddles uh, and violins, um, and they do not make them anymore. And they're severely expensive to try and get your hands on one. All it's right, two, two grand plus, and Ooh. because of that that particular movie, um, yeah, they're they're very very rare, and everybody wants one. Pretty much. Well, so that was quite an interesting one. Yeah, a lot of the props from the movie were then used again for Power Rangers and on the set of Firefly. As well. Oh wow! Which, so, which is quite a cool, a quite a cool link. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe not so much the Power Rangers one, but yeah, Firefly. <laughs> yeah, Firefly. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So the it was the Stormtroopers outfit were used in Firefly. Um, so I need to go back and watch that now. So yeah, yeah. same, yeah, absolutely definitely, the same. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and then there was obviously the Total Recall links. I think you had a lot of that as well. So, um, which was was quite interesting. So, um, and I'm trying to think what else I had. Um, the shower scene that you'd mentioned, yeah, John. Um, so, the, do you know the reason why the director was in there? Uh, was it just to put, was it not to put the mind at ease? Um, it's because they all re- they basically they like they refused to do that kind of scene because apparently it was in a lot of movies at the time, uh, and they all agreed that the only way they would do the scene is if the the director and the the co-director actually got naked in there with them. Yeah, so, good on them, man. Right. So, yeah, good so, on them. Like, a, a bit of power. So yeah. Good. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's pretty much pretty much some extras that I've got, yeah. Cool. Cheers, man. John? <laughs> right, so I've got a twin star system as a binary star system with two stars that are gravitationally bound to each other's orbit. Uh, asteroid belt is a region of space between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter where most of the asteroids in our solar system are found orbiting, orbiting the sun. Uh, the asteroid belt probably contains millions of asteroids. Uh, hump the bunk, <laughs> they said at some point, hump the bunk is used to describe someone or some company or some organisation that gets the raw end of the deal. <laughs> never heard of it. Ne- never. I, that was the first time I've actually seen it. And I was looking at, it says, steady as she goes. So it's describing something or someone that's progressing in a stable manner. 
the nautical phrase was originally used in reference to ships and steel and steadiness, and ships were traditionally referred to as females. That's why they say steady as she goes and not he goes. Okay. That's me. Smashing. Um, uh, a click is a kilometre. Uh, I had absolutely no idea. Seen loads of uh, loads of films like this and heard them refer to a click, and I never knew it was a kilometre. You get aliens. As soon as I seen aliens, it's like it's ten clicks. Yeah. I'm like, Wee! yeah, uh, well, very good. Uh, the film is based upon 1959 pro war book by Robert Heinlein, um, but the book is more classroom lectures than actual bug killing. Uh, Paul Verhoeven never finished the book because it was so boring. Uh, the lead role of Rico <laughs> was originally considered for Mark I Hate Foreign People Wahlberg and Matt <laughs> I Hate Trans People Damon. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, uh, I I believe Casper Van Dien likes people of different ethnicities and is, is very pro-trans. Uh, so <laughs> I guess they did all right out of that one. <laughs> Uh, Phil Tippett, our old friend Phil Tippett's back, hey, John. Uh, he did the visual that. effects for this, as well as the ED-209 uh, in, Ghost, in Ghostbusters, um, in Robocop, Robocop and the yeah. um, uh, the dinosaur wrangling in Jurassic Park, of course. Uh, the bugs were initial designs that were rejected from Tremors 2. What? Yeah. Whoa. And the film was initially going to be released in the summer of 1997, but the studio didn't want it to go up against their other big movie of the summer, which was Air Force One. All right, okay. I can see why. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, a real political party copied the Do You Want to Know More adverts, Australia's far-right One Nation Party. <laughs> That's brilliant. You couldn't make that up. Yeah, no. You actually couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, yeah, apparently not, yeah. Uh, the term Jarhead is a term for a member of the Marine Corps. The 2005 film Jarhead, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, is based upon the real-life story of Anthony Swafford and is set during the original Gulf War. Uh, the average wage for a corporal in the British Army is uh, £34,594,000, but instead of killing cockroaches, they work for them. Uh, maybe <laughs> going to get us uh, get us some complaints that one, but it's true. And should you want to sign up for the forces in America, you will take the uh, following pledge: I, Mister American, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign, domestic, and Trump, and I bear true faith and alliance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States, unless it's Trump, and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to the regulations and uniform code of military justice, so help me God. What happens if you don't believe in God? I wonder if they, uh, they're, they're to, I so help to, me, Jeebus. I, I think you just need to believe in the President. <laughs> that, makes, that makes one of them. Uh, last, last final thing. The um, mobile infantry can be any of the following. Mechanised infantry is equipped with armoured personnel carriers. Motorised infantry employs trucks or other vehicles. Mounted infantry riding horses. Air mobile infantry carried by helicopter or other aircraft. And this one's the best one. The bicycle infantry, specifically <laughs> employing bicycles for movement. <laughs> What about the infantry? Infantry, is that all just babies? <laughs> <laughs> the, the infant infantry. Uh, Path A News was a producer of newsreels and documentaries from 1910 to 1970 in the United Kingdom. And that is all I wrote. Literally, that is all I wrote. Cool, cool. Uh, let's have some guesses while I top them up. Uh, Shamu, mate, um, how do you think we got? God, I'm going to say 80, 87. Okay. John? Uh, 97. Ooh, you're both over. 75. Oh, what? 75. Oh. Not as many as we uh, we might have hoped, but still plenty for a film not based in reality. Yeah, true. Keep true. that in mind. This is why we don't really do this type of thing. Uh, we took this we took this on uh, because you recommended it. But i t I'll tell you one thing I've learned from this, and, and that's all down to you, Show is that I think we probably can do more sci-fi. I think mm -hmm. we were holding off not doing sci-fi because we worried we'd end up coming out with like 23 things we learned yeah, from fucking uh, space. Event Horizon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas there's only, there's only, on this there was only space 
the military and some of the prom stuff, the school stuff. There was because it's, it's yeah. setting a make believe setup. It's hard to pick things up. Yeah, but I thought we did. Uh, I thought we did extremely yeah, no, well, uh, and I'm really grateful. Uh, right, shall we tell us uh, again where where can we get your stuff? When's your album coming out? When when are we picking it up? Where are we getting it? Yeah, so I'm going to have an album um, coming out next, oh no, sorry, this year, um, so just be, more than likely um, the first week in May, um, once we get the final date, it's called Low Life and Living the Rewards, which is a bit of wordplay on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, um, so it's a, a concept album based on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, um, with every every song being a, an emotion or a person in, the, in that movie. I'm in book um so yeah so that that's common sense so yeah no thank Fantastic. you very much for no, where, having us. where can they check out your other stuff at the minute yeah so i'm on spotify so you can just type uh big shamu and you'll, you'll find all my tunes there and all the other tunes that have been on of, of everybody else's magic great yeah i've been telling everybody i know that likes uh hip-hop or any kind of rap to to, to check you out so hopefully uh they uh they'll they'll be i'll say gonna be queuing up for your album but hopefully they'll they'll just hit download they kind of <laughs> fucking know anymore hopefully they'll be picking up the mini disc whenever they can yeah. uh <laughs> limit, limited on, edition mini disc to two yeah i'm on like wow Find you on Lime Wire, you know. I'll get my demonoid account back up, man. Big, 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 hang on, bigshamu.exe. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll download that. That's got to be the That's new funny. album. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, thanks very much for coming on, mate. It's been great. I'm, no, I'm so excited to, uh, to 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 share what you've uh, what you've done for us uh, with with the listeners over the next couple of months. Oh, I love it. We love it. It's it's good. It's good. Yeah, stuff. it is. It is very very good. Uh, John, do you want to say your goodbyes to those lovely people? Yeah, goodbye, lovely people, and uh, thanks for listening to this one. It was the, the film itself. It's been a long time. I've easily about been about twenty years since I watched it, but mm. I totally loved it. Totally loved it. Thank yeah. you so much. It's great. Now uh, next week we're going to be covering Starship Troopers two. <laughs> certainly <laughs> won't. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, please recommend us to a friend. We're not asking for reviews. We're not asking for you to to like and share and all that kind of stuff. Just recommend us to a friend. That would be great if you can tell somebody that likes films or likes idiots that blather shite for an hour and a half. That yeah. would also be be good. Uh, next week we're going to be back with the first episode of a new se- new month, a little series that we're doing. We're going to be talking good films for once, John, as we kind of just jump into it. We're, 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 we're jump, jumping a little bit early because the first episode will be out on the 31st January, but it, everybody will probably be listening come February. So we're going to be talking Oscar films, Oscar winning films. Okay. Yeah, okay. we're going to start with something that probably doesn't get a good press for people uh, among our age range. But I think our mums and dads really loved, and we're going to be talking about Forrest Gump. Oh, right, okay, I yeah. can I can dig that. I can can, do that. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, loads of good music, loads of good tunes. Oh yeah, and quite a few presidents, uh, at least one of which got <laughs> shot. And some ping pong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was some whiff waff, as that fucking prick at number ten would say. Anyway, that's going to be next week. Uh, Shamu, cheers, mate. We've really enjoyed having you on. No, oh, thank you. All thank right. you. It's been a pleasure. John, I'll see you next week. Listeners, we'll be bug spunking in your ears next week again. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. See ya. See you guys. See ya.